Okay, and welcome to another video. This uh, this video is quite an interesting one because uh, I get a lot of questions about turning color images into black and white, especially it's a trick that photographers use when potentially an image doesn't work too well, if that makes any sense. When a photographers use it a lot, if, a, if an image doesn't quite look quite right, maybe it's a dark church and the image didn't, didn't expose too well. Uh, switch it to black and white, give it some contrast, do a lot of bit, bits of uh, grading here and there and you can recover quite a, quite a good image. But what if you've got an image that you want to turn from black and white into colour? Is it possible? Actually it is, and actually really, really easy in Photoshop with just using one blend mode. Uh, you could use more than one blend mode, but a simple blend mode colour, funnily enough, will actually turn a black and white image into a colour image. By the way, if you're new here, please subscribe, hit the notification bell to get updates for all my future videos. I do a lot of photography work. These images you're going to see today aren't actually aren't mine. There are links to them in the description where you can download them and use them for free. Let's get into this now. Okay, so here is the image I'm going to use. It's a simple rose, been turned to black and white. You'll often find when uh, an image has been turned to black and white, you lose a lot of contrast. I'm going to deal with that too. We're just going to add uh, a very simple layer above this in Photoshop. Here we go. And uh, funnily enough, uh, we're going to use solid color. We're going to do, do a solid color. But first, before I do that, I'm going to cut out the uh, the rose, make it easier to work with just the rose itself. The easiest thing to cut out here is actually the background. So we're going to select the background, use whatever selection tool you need to use. It's not a problem. Uh, I'm using just, just the magic wand tool here. And I'm just going to refine the selection and cut out the, uh, the rose. I've noticed a little bit of imperfections there, so I'm going to just do a little bit of work in the uh, selector mask, just to give uh, just give it a better outline, if you like. Uh, so there's a few bits and pieces going to work here. This part of the video, I'm actually showing you in real time how long it took. It's only like a couple of minutes, uh, and if you didn't have to select anything, it would take literally a few seconds to do this. What we're about to do, and yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're gonna. Use that as our selection. We're going, to, we're going to export it to a, a layer mask. So this is now becomes a mask. So we've got a mask we can use quite easily if it's, it's non destructive. If we need to bring anything back later, we can. Not that we're going to, but we're going to then choose a solid color to go at the top, top layer. And we're going to choose a color that we think the rose might represent a nice pink color potentially. And we're then going to change. The blending mode, this is, we're going to clip it first to the, the rose itself and change the blending mode to colour. Look at that. Boom. Done. It looks a little bit, uh, uh, the, 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 the contrast is kind of gone, so it's a little bit flat. We're going to just, just uh, sort the colour out first, give it, give it a slightly better colour. And if you can see here, you can actually change it to any colour you want because we've got this on a new layer. And because it's uh, set to the blend mode colour, you can just change it to whatever colour you want and you can go mad. If you go mad, you could, if you have more than one rose, you could uh, select each rose, rose individually and have completely different set of colours all over the place, if you so wish. And once we've done done that, I've found the colour that we want. Okay, that. And it's a bit flat. I'm going to maybe do a little bit extra stuff here. So I'm going to choose curves. I always use curves for most of the work. You could use curves to change the color if you actually wanted to, uh, but I'm actually going to bring down the uh, the midtones uh, and the shadows a little bit, and just give it a little bit of an S curve. Bring up the highlights, and it's kind of changed the color, but it's not too bad. If I really was being picky, I could turn this this the mode of this into luminosity, which means it doesn't affect the color, it only affects the luminosity, which is the brightness. Uh, I'm not too worried. I'm going to be adding a bit of red into this, so I don't want to change the mode. And there you go. Goes from this black and white image, which is quite nice, into a nice pink rose. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's get on to the next one. And this is a picture, obviously, of the face. It's a bit more tricky. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of work to get the face looking. I mean, a rose is a very simple object. A face has got a lot of complexity to it. So we're going to be in uh, uh, Facebook. We're going to select 
out the cape, whatever that is around his, his head, the hood, whatever. Uh, and so it's easier to select that. And then we've got the face selected in a mask. And we're just going to use this is speeded up, by the way. I've done this earlier. I'm going to be doing, I'm, I'm talking over it, but I'll speed it up because this took me about 25 minutes to do, but I don't want it to take 25 minutes to explain what I've done. And I'm choosing a skin color now. And I've got some skin color swabs that you can choose the RGB. Uh, which I'm going to overlay now and also uh, yeah we can change the, you can obviously change the face to any color I've obviously masked out the eye here the eye is not uh, part of this mask uh, so it doesn't go a funny color I'm going to deal with the eye eye and the the lips uh, by themselves later so we'll, we're gonna sort out the lips later uh, I'm just changing that to luminosity I'm, I'm working with the levels here uh, on the on the the face, but I don't want it to affect the color because when I brought up the highlights, uh, it's changed the color of the skin, so I've changed it to luminosity. So if I change a layer to a luminosity, it'll only affect the brightness; it doesn't affect the color. And I'm adding a few more layers of curves. These are going to be uh, affecting things like this, obviously the skin tone, and uh, we're going to be dodging and burning slightly. So that I'm going to take this up. I'm going to turn the mask off and then take a brush and then a brush back in where well, I think I need highlights and shadows. So your basic dodging and burning. I've covered this in other videos. I'm not going to cover how I did this in this video, but I use curves, turn the mask off, and then uh, uh, dodge and burn that way. Uh, now I'm going to work on the lips, trying to find a decent lip color that goes with the current skin tone that we've got with this. It was very tricky. I think I managed to just about do it in the end, uh, but well, I don't know. Uh, so we've masked out the lips, so there's not lips aren't being affected by by this, and giving it some more dodge and burn. But now we're going to look at the. I think we go to the lips next. I believe so. We're doing a bit more dodging and burning. So yeah, lip color pink. Obviously, uh, we're going to change that slightly in a second. Uh, so we've changed that to an overlay. I think I went to. Oh no, I went to color on there. I thought I might change that to overlay, but color seemed to work. And we're clipping all these, all these adjustment layers to the to the just that one layer with the lips, so it only affects the lips. We can change the color, contrast, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we've done a hue saturation. I'm still trying to find a good, good color of lips for this uh, skin tone because obviously it's a very dramatic look. The skin tone we've used is a, is a is a very pale skin, but because we've used a lot of dodge and burn, it actually gives that dramatic look. So it's got a very warm warm tone to it. Trying to match the tone of the lips to that, difficult. Coming on to the eye now, I want to add a, a, a tint of blue to the eye. So I've chosen a very sky blue. Uh, it's only affecting again. I've clipped that layer to the eye, and I'm only affecting the the eye now. I'm not affecting anything else. And there we go. A little blue in the eye. Taking out the edges because you don't want the blue around the edge of the iris. And we're going to have a, add another curves layer to this. And I added that to the lips and just, just darkening the edge of the lips slightly. Just wanted to make it. I know it's probably too much. Uh, looking at it now, back at it now, it probably was too much. I'm just whitening the eyes there. Grouped everything into our own individual group. So I know, you know, it's a bit of organization in Photoshop. It helps a lot, honestly. The cape color, I want to go for something uh, very brownish. Uh, give it a brown tint. Again, gone to the color mode, blend mode, uh, to give it a very, very brown look. And I'm going to finish this off uh, with a color. I'm just doing to make some little bits here. You get the gist. It's all about adding layers and layers and layers. Uh, I'm now going to go for a color look up just to round everything off and take it right down and come back again. And uh, yeah, this is what it looks like, and this is what it went to. Not bad. I don't mind. The lips might be off slightly, but it is what it is. Let's go on to the next one. So this image is a bit more complex because we've got more stuff involved in this one. We've got the sweater and the jacket and the background, and, and we've also got the, the face. So what I've done is I cut out the face separately to the sweater and then cut out this, the jacket separately too. So I can work on them all individually. I'm gonna, I mean, this is speed up a lot. This took me a lot longer. This took me probably about half hour to do this picture. Uh, so I'm gonna let this run 
and uh, overlay some music for you. It's all the same techniques. I've not done anything different, but I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It's, a, it's obviously, it a, a, can be a really tricky subject to tackle. The uh, uh, skin tones are hard to get, obviously. Uh, trying to match skin tones with things like lips and stuff like that from a black and white image is often quite difficult to understand the sort of levels and brightness and stuff like that. But just work at it. Uh, I use different colors uh, on, the, on the skin, not just the, the base color, but obviously different colors. Because skin tone has, has it varies from from nose to ear you know there, there's different in, in my skin tone there's different sort of pinks and oranges and and yellows all in the skin tone and uh you just have to work with it and work work as best you can uh some pictures are easier to work with than others obviously you get really complex ones i've worked with some really easy pictures to change here if you had a a scene with 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 lots of people uh, with potentially different skin tones and if you're in a landscape with, with different colors you know with buildings and, and grass and stuff like that it's going to be really tricky to do and it's going to take a long time you just have to work at it but it is possible uh, a lot of people think it's really difficult to change a black and white image to color it's actually not as long as you've got an idea in your mind of, of, of the, the, the tone and, and luminosity of a certain area in the picture you can actually get it quite easy but you just have to remember that, that a black and white image is generally uh, has less contrast in it so you need to bump the contrast you know give more more uh, uh shading to the darker areas and more brightness sometimes to the light areas and as long as you work with it and get it you know to the best you, you've got it uh and it doesn't look too flat you're generally going to do a fairly good job it's not difficult is what i'm trying to tell you just using just using a couple of blend modes blend modes like color blend modes like uh uh, uh what else we got the soft light sometimes works really well uh, just have a play around with those blend modes. Blend modes are really, really good. And uh, yeah, like I say, for a black and white image, you can change and put color into black and white image really easy. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please whack a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell so you get updates every time I upload a new video. And until the next time, I hope your Photoshop skills are coming along pretty well and you're joining in. Uh, again, the images for these are down in the description. Download them and play along. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. You're still here. Nice. It's good that you're still here because I want to tell you a little something. Those people who are avid followers of me, I want to give a little something back. And to do that it means working alongside you online because a lot of you can't make it to my workshop so i've just set up a patreon account it is patreon.com forward slash andy hornby photos so patreon is a platform where we can create stuff together even if you're halfway across the the globe and i can learn and teach alongside you literally alongside you there's so many things i can do to help you get your photography just to that next level it is awesome if you can make it to one of my workshops i've got a website Go to ahphotographyworkshops.uk and have a look, see what I've got going on. But if you can't make it to one of my workshops, Patreon is a really good platform where we can create stuff together and we can take your photography to another level. So if you like what I'm doing and you want me to learn alongside yourself, see you there. Take it easy, have a good day. Bye.